Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you the full assembly and review of the XCOV CNC which was sent to me for review by Inventables. As you can see I've got the 1000 by 1000 millimeter fully loaded kit which was quite expensive but Inventables sent it to me for free, even covered the import and shipping taxes which was very kind of them. And this is an awesome kit CNC that you can put together yourself. It's really simple to put together, just like a large IKEA chair with a lot more parts and a bit more expensive. So enjoy the video and if you've got any questions ask them in the comments section down below and definitely go and check out this CNC on the Inventables website. So I've got my x carve. I've received the wasteboard, the core components and also the rails and now I've also built my bench if you want to see how I made this bench link will be in the description down below to that video. Now it's time to build it. Head over to the Inventables website, www.inventables.com. Go over to the XCarve, which is right on their homepage. Scroll down a little bit, and then you'll be able to find the instructions. Now, the instructions are really, really good. I found that they're really high quality. It shows both video and picture and text tutorial, which is really useful. Due to the fact that the instructions over on the Inventables website are so precise and in-depth, there's not much point in me going into more depth in this video, considering it would take hours because there's so many details for the XCarve to put together. I'm not going to be going into much detail, but I will be mainly focusing on any problems that I run into later on. So opening up the box and having a look inside, it's really nice to see how well all of the individual parts are packaged. They're all separated into different boxes like spindle, motion controller, power supply, and all of that different stuff. And each individual bag of screws with each individual size of screws is labelled, bagged with the number of quantity and everything. And it was all packaged really well considering it managed to survive a journey to me all the way over America, from America, over a couple of weeks. And then from now on until the end of the assembly, it's pretty much just a matter of going through the instructions on the Inventables website and just following it exactly to the letter. If you follow it exactly without making any mistakes, don't bother trying to take any shortcuts, then it's pretty much as simple as putting together an IKEA chair, just with a couple more bolts and some more expensive parts. So we'll start off with the X carriage. This is a single piece of aluminium extrusion, as opposed to when the Shape Oku 2 was made and it was made of many different pieces. This both means that it's already assembled, so you don't have to make it yourself, which means a much shorter assembly time, much less parts, and it also makes sure that it's much more rigid, higher performance, and higher accuracy. It's pretty simple, all of the different steps for the X carriage. All that you've got to really do is use eccentric nuts and just normal nuts, putting them into different sized holes. Aluminium spacers hold out the smooth idlers, and then V-wheels are attached on. V-wheels are what's going to allow the X carriage to slide along the X rails. The NEMA 23 stepper motors are just attached using four bolts each, and they're all secured on very strong. This will look slightly different if you ordered NEMA 17 since they're smaller and they have different mounting holes. These eccentric nuts, some people find quite complicated, but they're actually pretty simple. They go into the larger sized holes on the X carriage, and this will also be repeated on the Y carriage. They're very simple. When you turn them, they've got a little shoulder inside, and the reason that they're eccentric is because the shaft which they hold inside is smaller than the hole diameter which they go into. So as you turn them, they change the position of the shaft. This will allow you to tighten up the V wheels on the X carriage to make sure that it doesn't rock backwards and forwards. So after about an hour of making, I've just finished assembling the X carriage and an hour is about the same as what the time said on the instructions. So that's pretty good. But if you didn't include things like terminal blocks and limit switches, and also if you had a 500 millimeter instead of a 1000 millimeter, you'd actually probably be able to assemble this much quicker, maybe only 40 minutes. After the X carriage, it's then onto the Y plates and these are done pretty much in the same way. But as you go, you need to mirror them. Again, it's using V wheels and static V wheels and smooth idlers. Whatever stepper motor size you're using, either NEMA 23 or NEMA 17, you just attach them onto the Y plates. Make sure that as you do them, you do this on the right side so that the pulleys on the stepper motors are facing in the right direction. Because I got that wrong and then had to switch them around and it took quite a bit of time. Then it's time to assemble the Y plates and the X carriage together with two long 1000mm rails would be 500mm if you got the smaller kit and this is going to create the gantry. This is just done using some self-tapping screws. It really helps if you use some lubricant like oil or WD-40, means that you can screw it in much tighter. It's also using a Torx 7 bit, which means it's much less likely to slip and crook D-thread. Again, with this, make sure that you orientate all of the plates in the right directions, and if you've got limit switches, you need to make sure that the slot running along the outside of one of the rails on the gantry needs to be on the upwards position, otherwise you won't be able to mount the stopper for the limit switch. So once you've attached one plate, you can then slide on the X carriage onto the gantry. Make sure you don't force it so you don't damage the soft plastic on the wheels. Once the gantry's been assembled and it's all in correct orientation, you then slide on a rail into the, each of the Y plates. 
Now it's time to make the z-axis which is going to be the up and down of the drill. It's just made with a very small piece of maker slide and then you tap in the very top bit which has got a bearing where your lead screw or threaded rod is going to sit. So now I've assembled the z-axis, I'm now going to trim the wires for the NEMA 23 stepper motors. This is almost the first step in wiring and I'm going to trim them short and then you want about a quarter inch of wire showing so you can thread them into the terminal blocks. For this I'd recommend getting a decent pair of wire strippers since the ones I was using were really old and didn't work properly and you don't get a pair inside the tool kit which will be quite nice but it's not an addition, maybe that's something that they should add in the future. But as I was trying to strip the end off my green wire I snapped it too short just from me being a bit stupid and trying to use too much force and being impatient and it wouldn't reach the terminal block so I had to solder on an extension. Once you've stripped and shortened the wires for the NEMA stepper motors, you can then attach them into the terminal blocks. It helps if you keep all of the wiring the same and if you head in direction from left to right going red, blue, green and black. Make sure that you do that for every stepper motor and it should be fine. Now you need to cut up the stepper cable that comes with your machine and for the 1000mm kit you need to cut it into lengths of two 12 feet sections, one 7 foot section and one 5 foot section. So once I've threaded the stepper cable through the x-axis, the problem is I cut it a little bit short so the other ones all must be a little bit long. So make sure when you do this, if you do do this, make sure that you cut them all the exact length. And this is meant to be the four foot section, but I've cut it, no, it's meant to be the five foot section, but I've cut it a little bit short and it only reaches to four foot. So what I'm doing is I'm using all of the excess wires from the other stepper motors that just came off here. And then I'm going to solder on attachments like this so that I can attach it to reach the terminal blocks down here. After I've twisted and soldered all of the connections and I'm sure that they're solid, it's then time to put heat shrink tubing and use a lighter to shrink it around to make sure I don't short out any of the cables together. This is what it looks like once I've fixed the problem. I wouldn't advise doing what I did because I actually left too much length in the other stepper cables. It's best with the wiring if you try and keep everything nice and neat and tidy. In the end, this still did work, however. Then for all of the other stepper motors on the other axes, the stepper cable is then attached to the bottom of the terminal blocks into the terminal of the wire using the same corresponding colours. Make sure that when you do this, especially on the gantry since that's the thing which is going to be moving, you don't want any excess wires hanging out too far that is going to get caught on your workpiece. And you also want to make sure that you do up all of the terminal blocks nice and tight, make sure any wires don't come loose over time. So now I'm getting pretty much to finished, I've attached the drag chain onto the X axis and then I can also attach the spindle into its mount on the Z axis. One of the last things to do was attach in the threaded inserts for my clamps into the wasteboard which comes with the wasteboard kit. This took a really long time since I had the 1000mm kit and there's so many different holes, there's actually 144. So after about an hour of horrible wrist killing pain, just using the simple Allen wrench, I finally inserted all 144 threaded inserts into the wasteboard. Using insertion nuts, brackets and rails, the frame is built for the bottom of the wasteboard to help support it so that it doesn't bend over time. The edge of the y-axis is then bolted onto this frame. So I've now attached the wasteboard to this and I've got all of the motors wired up into the wires with the drag chains. Now it's time to do the power supply. I live in the UK where it's about 230 volts coming through the mains. If you live in America it's going to be about 115. So there's a little switch on here that you need to set on the right setting. I'm going to set it on 230 volts because that's what my power supply is. If you've got limit switches or a G-code controlled spindle, you're going to want to solder on these 8 pins into 8 holes in the G-Shield. So now it's time to test whether this horrible mess of wiring has actually worked. I've just plugged it into the socket via a UK cable. I hope that everything's going to work. Hopefully if this works, a blue light should turn on. I haven't tested this yet. Right, I'll do this switch first. Oh, that's good. What does this do? Oh. So this is the spindle and this is for the Arduino and the G-Shield and this blue light means that it's working and because there's no smoke, hopefully that's good. You can then peel off the covering on this sticker and you're pretty much good to go. There's not much calibration, the base and everything is already level. All you've got to do is tighten up the GT2 belting on all of the axes to make sure that it's very secure. Here's where I made a bit of a rookie mistake in my haste to use the X-Carve since I just spent a couple of days assembling it. I really wanted to use it straight away and I didn't read the last step which was to download the Arduino drivers. I tried to connect it via the computer and Windows tried to install drivers itself but it couldn't obviously since it doesn't know Arduinos. And then I just couldn't connect it to the computer, couldn't connect it to Easel and nothing could recognise it. What I actually had to do was go over to the Arduino website and download the drivers so that it can be recognised. Then you can go into device manager and find whatever COM port is being used. 
So this is it, the finished X-Carve, and I have to say I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. So first I started off with Easel, and the first thing that Easel tells you to do is run a sort of Hello World program, and it draws a sort of smiley face thing. Uh, I tried it out a couple of times just with a pencil strapped onto the X-Carve instead of using the actual spindle with the spindle turned off and uh, had a couple of problems with my y-axis there wasn't actually enough power going to the stepper motors so it sort of ended up messing it up and doing some really bad designs but in the end i actually got it to work so to solve this problem i went on the inventables community forum and asked the question it's a problem that a couple of people have had in the past and i think it mainly happens with uk's power supplies the problem is since the y-axis is driving two different stepper motors and the nema 23 so they're probably more power hungry there wasn't enough current coming from the g-shield if you open up the power supply you can go inside and have a look at the g-shield and you can see on the y-axis which is labeled there's a current potentiometer here and if you just adjust that and increase it slightly it solves all of the problems. I also had to do the same for my x-axis in the end as well. So I've got some horrible scrappy 6mm plywood here and now let's just see if we can engrave some things in the surface of it using the new x-carve. So I'm going to clamp the entire piece of plywood down using the clamp set that Inventables sent me. You could pretty easily make these, they just insert into the threaded holes that I threaded into the waste board that also came with it. And also a lot of people use for smaller things, you can just use double sided tape. If this was a much heavier board, say 18mm thick and it was completely flat, then you can also just use the weight of the board to hold it down, but that's not really advised. So first things first, you've got to turn on the power supply, so plug it in. I've already got this plugged into my UK plug, and then you can just turn it on like this. Then you need to connect it to your computer via this USB cable which comes with it. You just plug it into the Arduino and then into your computer. Now you're pretty much good to go. The only other thing that I can think of is beneath this mess of tangled wire, there's this switch here for the spindle. You can either turn it on, which just turns it on. You can have it off, which is what it's on at the moment, or you can put it on logic, which means that it's gonna be controlled through the G-code by easel. The next thing that I want to do, and it's very advised that you do this, is you hop over into easel and do the machine setup. This sets all of the things and the different settings that you need for your machine in GRBL. And the things like, it will set different things like whether you're using an Acme lead screw or an M8 threaded rod. That will change the amount that it goes up and down per rotation. These are quite important settings. So now you then go and hop over into easel, which is a new program made by Inventables. It's very useful. It's pretty much made specifically for the X-Carve and the Shapeoko, and it works really, really well. I'll go into more detail about Easel in the upcoming videos which I've got coming out with new projects that I'll be making in Easel, but for now I'm just going to go for something simple like The Art of Weapons, just written out using Easel's inbuilt text tool. So I've got the text that I want to engrave in some plywood written out on the screen and I'm then going to highlight all of the text and change it to one path. This is just because I want to engrave it really quickly. I'm also going to change the depth to about 1mm just because I want a really clean surface engraving that I can do in one pass. Then go over into machine, select your material and select the size of the bit that you're using. Being a complete noob already, you don't have to work with any feeds and speeds. All you've got to do is select the material that you're using. Easel does the rest for you, which is really good. Once you're happy with it, head over to the top right and just below carve, click show tool paths and it will show you the tool paths which you're going to use. Red shows rapid movements and blue shows carving. Then once you're happy with that, connect your machine and the carve button in the top right will go green. You can click it and then you can start setting up your machine to set the carve up. For a simple carve like this, you want to click unlock without homing, especially if you don't have limit switches. Confirm your material thickness, it's not very important for just a simple engraving job like this however. Secure the material, I did this with just the simple clamps that come with the X-Carve if you order them, and they're very good, but you can also just for a simple project like this use double sided tape. Confirm the size of the bit you're using, I'm actually using a V engraving bit just for an engraving Dremel since I didn't want to break any of my expensive carbide tooling. Then it's time to confirm the home position of your machine. You want to use some of the inbuilt buttons in Easel and jog the machine over to the home position, which for Easel is in the bottom left hand corner of whatever piece you're going to engrave. So you just move it over there with the buttons and you also lower the bit until it's just above touching the surface. Then confirm the home position and it'll take you to this next page and you're almost ready to cut. You then click OK, raise the bit and Easel raises the spindle of your machine. It will then turn on your spindle and if you're not using a G-code controlled spindle, you're going to have to do this yourself. Confirm the spindle is on and then the start carving button will light up and then you can carve. So the cut was going pretty well, it was cutting very quickly and very cleanly and it was making a little bit of dust but easy to hoover up. One of the problems that I had was my X-axis GT2 belting slipped absolutely loads, pretty much every time I could hear it losing steps and then it started throwing the entire cut out of whack. Here you can see just how loose it is and it should be taut like a guitar string to make sure that the stepper motors don't slip. 
So since the belt seemed to slip so easily there when it shouldn't have, I'm going to use some heat shrink tubing to hold it in place once I've got it tight enough. And then if I ever need to tighten it again as the belt stretches, I can just cut off the tubing and redo it. So this is the X-axis duty 2 belting once it's done and it's really really taut. This is just the heat shrink tubing here, you can't see it very well because it blends in actually really nicely. Other people on the forum have been using zip ties and stuff but they don't blend in as nicely and this doesn't restrict any of the movement, it just passes straight underneath the V-wheels and doesn't get caught up in the smooth idlers since it's so short. I've done about 5 or 6 hours of full on carving, full on machining with this belt and it still hasn't come loose in the slightest. The problem wasn't as severe on the Y-axis but over time they were slipping again and it's a real pain to tighten these up since they're such fiddly nuts and bolts so I ended up putting heat shrink tubing around the Y-axis as well. The only thing that I had to do was make sure that it was a little bit shorter over here since otherwise it will get caught up in the smooth idler here since the, the Y axis comes all the way to the edge here so you just got to shorten it. Over time I can just cut off these if the belts do stretch as they're meant to. I then carried on with the carve and it worked flawlessly. I then cut out another square around it just using a different end mill. So as you can see this was the first attempt here where the belt slackened off. It's pretty rubbish but this is the second attempt here and it worked really well. Even the square around it worked quite well. So thanks for watching guys, that's pretty much it with my x -carve assembly and review. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you had, I'd be really appreciative if you go out and check out the x -carve. even if you don't consider buying one, considering how kind Inventables have been to me to send me one of these machines which I can use and do so much with. I would also, if you just want to buy any CNC parts, I'd really recommend Inventables as a company. They're very kind to work with and if you have any issues, they'll replace any parts that are broken and they've got a really good community forum if you've got any issues with an x -carve or one of their products they'll help you solve it also they were kind enough to pay even the import tax for when they were sending me my machine as you can see in a couple of these time lapses i've been getting down and doing quite a lot with my x carve so far i've done quite a lot of complex 3d milling milling out a rambo and slingshot from winston moy's tutorial the link to his tutorial will be in the description down below and if you haven't already seen his channel it's a really good cnc and channel that's helped me learn quite a lot of the stuff which i already know now I definitely recommend that you go and subscribe and check him out, he's made some pretty cool slingshot related videos and also just general CNC videos and his video quality is great. Some of these tutorials will be up next week and hopefully I'll have the slingshot tutorial up next week. Also there will be a link in the description down below to my CNC playlist to which in the future I will add all of my CNC projects as I go. Be sure to check that out in a month or so when there will be absolutely tons more projects. A lot of people were also wondering, now that I've got my new toy, am I going to be making every single project using it? And of course not. But in all of my tutorials, I always aim to use hand tools over power tools, and this is something that you can do with hand tools for most of the parts. But don't worry, if you do are interested in CNCing, I will definitely be using this in the future still.